Welcome to this video on Identity and Access Management. In this video, we'll do a lab exercise. We are going to look at three items in specific. Number one, we'll understand how to customize the login URL for IAM users. Number two, we'll understand how to activate multi-factor authentication on your root account. Number three, we'll understand how to set the password policy. Let's begin. Number one, we'll understand how to customize the login URL for IAM users. This is my current IAM user sign-in link, which means when my IAM users try to log in, they need to access this URL first. We tried this in the last lecture as well, right? Just gonna copy that and we'll try it one more time. Just open a private window, hit enter, and that's my login page. There's no problem with it except one thing the login URL itself. It's pretty long and it's complex. It's hard for people to remember that. So what we can do is we can customize that a little bit. Not completely, just a little bit. So we can click on customize and we can introduce an alias. I'm going to use the alias called my web console. And I'm going to say yes create. And now the login URL looks a little more friendlier. It now says my web console dot sign in dot aws dot amazon dot com slash console. I'm just going to copy this one over here and I'm going to go back to the private window and I'm going to paste that and hit enter and it works. We can verify that by logging in with the account that we created earlier and I hope I typed the password correctly. Hit enter. Perfect. So that's the way in which you can customize that login URL and make it slightly or a bit more friendlier. Let's go back. Number two, let's discuss how to activate multi-factor authentication on your root account. This is one of the most important security measure that you should perform on your AWS account. It is highly recommended that you enable multi-factor authentication on your root account. Because without this, your account only has a username and password. If somebody is able to get access to your username and password, they can use all the resources on your AWS account and you will get charged for that. So it is highly recommended that you enable multi-factor authentication on your account. The way to do that is very simple. Just navigate to IAM and come down over here to dashboard. You'll notice over here it says activate MFA on your root account and it has this little exclamation mark which indicates that I haven't done that. Just going to drop it down and there's an option that says manage MFA. We'll click on that. We have two options. We could use a virtual multi-factor authentication device or we could also use a hardware MFA device. What's the difference? A virtual device is an app on your cell phone. It's a device which displays token numbers that can be entered into the AWS console when you log in. The hardware device is one of those crypto cards which keeps showing you new codes every time and you punch in that code. The device which you can use with your AWS account looks something like this. It's a little device which displays a code probably every minute. When you try to log into your AWS account, you'll enter the code that's on the device at that moment. If you want to purchase one of those devices, you can just come down over here, you can click on this and it will take you to a page over here where you can actually purchase that device. Right now, I'm going to use a virtual MFA device. The virtual MFA device supported by AWS is listed over here as well. Just go back over here. You'll notice these are the applications, the mobile apps that are supported by AWS. You have Google Authenticator and there's one more which is called as Authy two-factor authentication. You can just go to Play Store or the App Store, download this it looks like this. The app looks like this. The way to activate that is very simple. Just come down over here, just select this option, a virtual MFA device and click on next step. It says to activate a virtual MFA device, you must first install an AWS MFA compatible application on the user's smartphone, PC or other device. Assuming that you've already done that, I'm going to click on next step you have this little QR code over here. Once you install this app, 
Just click on this plus sign over here. It will give you the option to scan for a QR code. Just scan this QR code. Once you do that, it gets added into your application and it starts displaying codes every minute. You need to enter any two successive codes and click on activate. That will activate multi-factor authentication on your AWS account. Once activated, the next time when you try to log in, after you put in your username and password, you will be prompted to enter the token number. Be sure to not lose your smartphone, because if you do that, there is no way to access your AWS account. You'll have to contact AWS support. How do I know that? Because I lost my phone recently, I had to get in touch with AWS support to remove MFA from my account and log in. Right? Let's close this for now. I'm assuming yours is a brand new AWS account. If that is the case, I would highly recommend that you configure all the items listed over here. Make sure you get all green check marks over here, which is recommended to secure your AWS account. The last thing on this video is how to set a password policy. It's very easy. You can go to account settings over here and you'll have the option to set your password policy. You can completely customize your password policy. You can set the minimum length. You can set the usage of uppercase, lowercase, and numbers in your password, and also a non-alphanumeric character. You can also set password expiration, password reuse policy, and so on. So this is a nice way to centrally control your IAM password policy. If you're interested to get a list of all your IAM users, you can go to Credential Report over here. Just click on Download Report. It will download a spreadsheet which contains information or details about all the IAM users that you have configured. Right? So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section. I'll try to address them. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'm going to catch you in the next video. Thank you.